Hi friends, this is Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. It's, um, well, it's Tuesday, it's time for the Facebook Live. And I apologize in advance if you hear my dog upstairs barking. The mailman is coming and she views it as her duty to scare him away every single time. Usually I grab her and catch her before she scares the poor guy because he walks right in front of our window. But I am down here, Lily is upstairs, and... If I try to keep her down, or she's just gonna sit here and growl the whole time. So I apologize. She's you're gonna hear her going nuts. But um, so how's everyone doing? I'm so excited to be here today. I was working on these projects and I worked on the project sheet, and I just I've been having so much fun with these peaceful poppies elements. So I had to choose them to do the Facebook Live today. So um, I just want to remind everybody though that celebration is going on, and that's Stampin' Up's biggest promotion, their best, most fun promotion of the year. And they put out this special booklet and it's got a bunch of free different items in it. And there's stamp sets, there's designer series paper, there's embellishment kits, there's a card kit, lots of good things going on in here. And the best part of all is everything in here is free. So depending if you order $50 or you order $100, you can choose items in the celebration brochure for free. So hi Jane, welcome. That reminds me, I need to refresh my screen so that I can see who's on here, see if there's any comments. So just give me a second here. Okay, there I am. And I'm going to turn the volume down. Okay. We're good to go now. Um, so just want to remind you of that. And there's no limit. So it's not like you order $50 and you pick one thing and that's it. You can just, you can keep going. You can get multiples of the same item. This runs through March 31st. And Stamp Stampin' Up! will be adding more free items as the promotion period goes on. The other thing that's going on with Celebration is joining the Stampin' Up! team and the Joyful Stamper team to become a demonstrator. And that does not mean that you're doing this as a business. Not at all. In fact, most demonstrators don't do this as a business. They just, they join because they want the discount. They don't want to pay full price for their products. They're having fun with it. They want to be with other people that are just as excited about stamping and Stampin' Up! as they are. Well, during celebration, Stampin' Up! makes it really attractive to join. They throw in all kinds of free things. So for $99 plus tax, you get to pick out $125 of product of your choice. And that can be things from the annual catalog, from the mini catalog, from the clearance rack even. You'll also get a free mini paper cutter. You'll get a free six by six inch paper sampler pack. And you get to pick out a stamp set of your choice. You get the most expensive one that's been sitting on your wish list for a while. And all of this ships for free. And then going forward, any any orders you place, um, you get a twenty a minimum twenty percent discount on that. You can sell to your friends if you want. You can have friends place orders. You can have family place orders. Hi, Mike. But you don't have to do any of that. You can just be your own customer. I was that way for years. I bought only for myself. Had a great time with it. Loved being a part of the team. It was so fun. And now I do this as my full-time job, and I love this, too. This is really, really fun for me. So think about joining my team of Joyful Stampers, getting a discount. Maybe you'd like to make it a business. I'm here for you either way. I welcome all kinds of demonstrators. So look into this. Email me if you have any questions. Okay. So I'm going to jump. I say it's the happy half hour, so I'm going to jump into the projects. So today's projects, I'm going to show you ways to use these elements down here on page 25 of the mini catalog. And if at any time, if you want your own copy of the Stampin' Up! mini catalog or celebration brochure, just send me an email, nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com, and I will send a free catalog package out to you. This catalog's full of beautiful stuff, and I love that it's so colorful. They packed a lot of color into this one. And, I mean, just look at this. Uh, peaceful poppy suite right here the color uh, board right there that I, I love that those colors are so gorgeous together but I'm gonna focus on this peaceful poppies elements package down here they're only six dollars and fifty cents and mine are heavily used so you'll see a lot of pieces pu uh, punched out of it but you'll get two sheets of everything so you get two sheets of these printed colored die cuts and they just pop right out of the sheet and you can glue them onto your projects 
You also will get printed vellum. You can see I used a lot of those. But the pattern is embossed in white onto these sheets. And there's flowers of poppies of different sizes. There's leaves. There's bouquets of poppies. And those also just punch right out and you can glue onto your projects. Then we have two sheets of black embossed um, cardstock. So there's a nice scallop border there, there's a banner, there's this decorated circle. I, I, you can tell I've used, I've used a lot of these, and this is my only pack, so I don't have a full brand new pack to show you. And then the last thing that they have in the Peaceful Poppies Elements pack are these watercolor shapes. This is watercolor paper, and the images are heat embossed in white on the watercolor paper. So what that means is when you take your aqua painter and you go over it with ink to watercolor it and water, the white areas will resist the ink. So you can take a paper towel and just gently dab it off and the white areas will still show through. And the watercolor, the blank watercolor, unembossed watercolor spaces will hold the color. So we're gonna use those today too. In fact, we are going to use elements from each one of these different types that are in the package. So all of this for $6.50, and remember you're gonna get even more because mine have pieces punched out of them. So it's quite a full pack, you can do a lot with it. Okay, and just a tip, our embellishments come in a plastic, these little plastic bags. I like to save them. So if I punch pieces out, for instance, of this elements pack, and I decide I'm not going to use them, they're just not working for the project I'm doing, I will keep them in this bag and store everything together. Sometimes two pieces come loose and I don't wanna lose them, so I'll store them in that bag and it keeps everything together because I don't wanna waste any of this. So hang on to those little plastic bags that all your embellishments come in. They come in handy. And the other thing I have too is this tip I have is this is a piece of cardboard backing that comes with the elements kit. And it ships that way so that these don't get damaged in shipment. It keeps them nice and straight. I like to save these. And I have a Xyron machine. And I will run, I get a, um, a magnet cartridge for my Xyron machine. And I will run this piece of cardboard through it. And it puts a magnet on this side. And then what I do is I store all my dies on there. The dies are metal, so they stick to the magnet. And so it's just, it's free. It's coming with my my uh, crafting supplies anyway. So it's another way to repurpose it. And I will show you later on, when I show you the dies, they are on a magnet sheet that I created using the way I just told you about. So I'll be sure to point that out when I bring them back into the camera. So okay, some little crafting tips there. So we are gonna get started. Uh, first card, which one should we do first? I think we'll do this one first. Let me move my catalog. This is the first card that we are going to make. And these right here are both in the Peaceful Poppies Elements pack. This is one of the colored die cut pieces. And this is one of the black embossed pieces. And you can see I'm heat embossed with white embossing powder on there. So you can either stamp with white crafting or you can heat emboss on it too. It can, it's sturdy enough to withstand that. So let me get out my supplies. We'll get started. This is another example of reusing your packaging to store your pieces. I am notorious for losing little things like this, and I may even do so now that I've pulled them out of the package. So I am going, I have a project sheet made up that I'm gonna post when I'm done with the Facebook Live here, and it's gonna have all the measurements and supplies for the projects that I'm doing today. So you don't need to worry about writing them down. As, I'm, as you're watching. I'll have that um, on my blog. I'll also put it on the in the YouTube description whenever I upload this to, to YouTube. So this is just a standard five and a half by eight and a half piece of Mossy Meadow cardstock, and I scored it and folded it in half. So that's gonna act as our card base. Then we have a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I have a piece of Peaceful Poppies Designer Series paper. And it comes with a pattern on both sides. This has um, a poppy parade watercolor wash on the back. And this side has a gorgeous watercolored pattern. I'm going to use this side today. 
So what I want to do first is stamp this Whisper White cardstock, and I'm going to use Poppy Parade ink to do that. And I am using the splatter stamp from the Painted Poppies stamp set. This this image right here. And I'm going to ink it up with the Poppy Parade ink. And I'm just going to randomly stamp it. Probably three times I think would be good. One, two, and three. And that's going to go on our card base. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little um, die cut pieces right there. And I will show you. They came from the painted labels dies. And these dies in the catalog, you can buy these together at a 10% discount because these are meant to coordinate with the painted poppy set. I don't know if you could see this, but this framelit is going to cut out this poppy here, this larger one, if there's can match that up. This smaller one cuts this one out, and then we have that leaf right there. And then you have a second one which also cuts that out. So if you stamp multiple leaves, you can run them through two at a time. And then you have these other shapes here too. This is the piece that I used to cut out this little scalloped border right here. I cut out two of them. And then we have this swirly one. I'll show you a card later where I use that one. Uh, these two labels. I have a card to show you that uses those labels. And then we have this piece right here. It's a nice scallop circle piece. And this is what I was talking about where I ran this cardboard through my Zyra machine to create a magnet that holds my framelits. That way they don't get lost. So you can buy just the stamp set or you can buy the matching dies that go with it. Or you can buy them together at a 10% discount. So we're using the painted labels dies and that's what I used to cut these out. So I'm going to go ahead and let me get my adhesive. And I'm going to glue all these pieces together. So first the Whisper White one will get glued. And I'll stick that right over there. And then next I'm going to put down my Painted Poppies Designer Series paper piece. And that's going to go on the edge there. And that one goes top to bottom. There we go. And now for these little scalloped pieces here, I'm going to use a fine tip glue pen. And the reason I'm going to use the fine tip glue pen is because if I try to use my multi-purpose liquid glue, I feel like it's it's this is just too tiny of a piece and that glue is going to ooze out everywhere. So I'm just going to run a little line along that border there. And I'm going to put it down on my card right along there. And I'll get the second die cut piece and run a little line of fine tip glue down there. Whoop. And I will put that down there, just below the first one. Now, if this doesn't stick right away for you, what you can do is just take a clear stamping block and you can use it to press down and apply pressure to those pieces and that will make them adhere. And then I'm gonna put my cap back on this fine tip glue because it has a tendency to dry out pretty fast if you don't do that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of this crinkled, whoop, there's a little missing die there. Um, I have a piece of this crinkled white seam binding ribbon that's also part of the Peaceful Poppy Suite. It's really soft and you can use it as is or you can stamp on it. I don't know if you can see this in my card, but I stamped this in Mossy Meadow ink and I used a splatter stamp. Now the splatter stamp I'm gonna use for that is this smaller one right here, right on the cover there. So let me get my block. Okay, let me get an ink pad. And just lay your ribbon out on your grid sheet. And go ahead and ink it up. And you just stamp along it with your stamp and your ink. Now you can use the larger splatter stamp, that would certainly make it go faster. However, I just used it in Poppy Parade and I don't feel like cleaning it, so I'm gonna use the smaller one. 
And you don't have to cover the whole ribbon if you want. You can leave some white space in between. So I'm doing this in Mossy Meadow ink. There you go. And it just so just something fun, something different you can do with your ribbon rather than just using it as it is on the the spool that it comes on. So we I learned that trick at on stage when I went to Stampin' Up's convention in Las Vegas. And I thought, wow. Never would have thought to do that if somebody hadn't showed me how to do that. There are some things like you just I don't know. There are some truly, truly amazingly creative people out there, and they they amaze me, the things that they come up with. And I am so grateful to the internet because otherwise I wouldn't see that idea. So, and I'm just gonna tie that in a bow. And I tie that around my card, okay? Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of those black embossed pieces from the Peaceful Poppies Elements package and I'm not sure where I put them now. I mean, I have my piece here, so we're good to go. All right, and I'm gonna heat emboss a sentiment on it. So what I'm gonna do first is take this embossing buddy, and what this does is it eliminates, if you just tap it on there, it eliminates all the static from your cardstock so that your embossing powder does not stick anywhere that you don't want it to stick. Sometimes you might want a splattered look or it doesn't bother you, but in this case, I don't want stray powder. So I use the embossing powder or embossing buddy to um, get rid of the static. And I'm gonna use a Versamark ink pad with this sentiment. Now this sentiment comes from the free celebration set, Sending You Thoughts. This is a really great all-purpose uh, sentiment set and it's free with a $50 order from now through March 31st or unless Stampin' Up! sells out of these. And so this one says another sensational year of you. I'm going to ink it up with Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp it on the left side of this element piece because I'm actually not going to use that whole piece. I'm going to trim it. All right, so I've stamped that sentiment and now I'm going to sprinkle white Stampin' Emboss powder on it. I like to keep my embossing powder in these giant Ziploc containers because it's easier to use. Um, they stay neatly contained and all I have to do is take the spoon that I keep with it and I pour the powder on right over the container itself. It falls right back into it. I don't have to try to return anything to the jar and it stays nice and neatly contained. And you can pour several jars in here. There's a lot of room in there. Okay, so I have that. And even if you do have a couple extra stray flecks of powder, you can just take a paintbrush. Oops, sorry, and wipe that away. Now I'm gonna turn the heat gun on so it's gonna get a little bit loud for a minute. I'm gonna let it heat up for a few seconds. And if you've never heat embossed before, it is like magic. Hi, Lisa. I love watching the powder melt. This is one of the first things that I learned as a new stamper 20 years ago. Just apply the heat from the heat tool and you'll see the powder changes from being rough and grainy to being smooth and glossy. And it's it's like magic. It never fails to impress, ever, ever, ever. Okay, so I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals to apply that to my card. Let me get some. Okay, and I am gonna lay them down right on my card here. Peel off the liner. And I'm going to apply the sentiment right there. And it's okay that it hangs off the edge of this card because I am, um, actually I'm gonna move it over a little bit more. And if you're careful about peeling this up off of the dimensionals, you can re reposition it. I wanted to leave room for my, my poppy there, so that's why I had to move it over. And then I'm just gonna turn it over and take my paper snips and I'm gonna trim the overhang there just like that. And I'll save this piece to use in another project. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece, which is one of the colored printed pieces also in the Peaceful Poppies Elements pack, and I'm going to use liquid glue to apply that to my card base. Just put a little bit on the back, and I'm just gonna apply it right there. 
put over a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And I can see the last thing I did is I put some sequins on with a fine tip glue pen. Now, if you don't like to fuss with little things, let me close my ink pad because otherwise I'm guaranteed to get ink on something that I don't want it on. You can leave the sequins off if you want to. You certainly don't have to put them on, but I always like to add a little bit of extra something to my cards, and these are a fun way to do that. And you, you get 750 of them in this container, approximately. I didn't sit here and count them. All right, I'm gonna add some more. Now you can use, if you don't wanna fuss with rhinestones, you can use, um, if you don't want to fuss with sequins, I mean, you can use rhinestones. Those already have adhesive on the back of them, so you can just peel and stick those. And I think I want another one. I want one down here this time. Some of these sequins, too, are flower-shaped. Like this one right now I'm putting on is a flower. All right, that looks good to me. So there you go. That's the first card with the first way to use elements from those Peaceful Poppies Elements Pack. So that is card number one. All right. These are fast. Now I will pull out the second card. I'm going to, now I have to tell you too, the fine tip glue pen, it doesn't dry immediately. So if you're going to add sequins, make sure you give it some time to dry. So for instance, I'm not going to go ahead and stack another card on top of this one. I'm going to set this one aside to dry for a little bit before doing that. Okay, that was card number one. Now let me pull out card number two. This second card, I actually just saw this last night. And it was done by another stamper by the name of Patty Bennett. This is card number two. And I noticed she used a printed piece on hers too. And I just loved it. I love the black and white simplicity of it. And I liked all the layers and I liked the bright ribbon. Now she had her card going this direction and she also used a different color ribbon. This is pineapple punch, but otherwise I kept it the same. And the other thing I liked about her card too, is this designer series paper she used. It's also a free celebration item with a $50 order and it's called golden honeybee or golden honey, sorry, specialty designer series paper. I They comes 12 by 12, but I cut these down to size. And you can see, this is the pattern I'm using on the card today. But there's, it's black and white with color scheme with gold foil in there. And it has a honeybee theme. And there is a stamp set and some dies that are meant to go with it in the mini catalog, but you don't, you don't have to keep everything together. You don't have to work with all one suite. You can mix and match, and that's what I did on, this card, or I should say Patty did, and I, I copied her card because I liked it so much. So this paper is free with a $50 order. We're going to use it on this next card. Pull this out. This, I'm using a piece of basic black, five and a half by eight and a half inch cardstock. And again, this is for, scored and folded in the middle at four and a half inches. And I've already gone ahead and I've die cut all my pieces. Okay, so this one, I used a stitched rectangle die on it, and I'm going to go ahead and glue this one. There's only one piece of stamping on this, this particular card. So if you need to make a bunch of cards, if you need to make a card in a hurry, or you just, I don't know, maybe you want to make something but you're just a little bit too tired to, this would be a great card to make. Okay, we have that piece, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, glue this piece onto this basic black piece. Now, if you're wondering where the stitch scallops came from, that is from the Stitch So Sweetly dies in the mini catalog. And what I like to do with this with sets with dies like these is I like to die cut all the shapes out. So when I sit down to do a project, I can pull these out, and I could see which one would fit my project best without holding the frames up, the dies up to it. And you can also play around with them just to see how the different elements layer. So you can try out different things without wasting paper by die cutting and committing yourself to it. So you can play around with it. And I keep these 
with the dies themselves so that they're always handy when I want to use them. And this is another example of taking the extra packaging, running it through my Xyron to make a magnet sheet out of it to keep these dies. Otherwise, the dies come in this envelope here, and you can certainly keep them in here. The envelope, the flap tucks in, so they'll stay nice and safe. I just find them easier to access on the uh, magnetic sheet. Now, I know there's a company called Stampin' Storage that you can buy those magnet sheets already made for you. And from what I've heard, they are phenomenal. They are very, very sturdy. Your dies aren't going to fall off. They're not going to go anywhere. And I have bought organization and storage pieces from Stampin' Storage before, so I can vouch for them. They are a really good company to buy stamp storage pieces from. Now, this is a 5.5 by 2 inch piece of Golden Honey um, Specialty Designer Series paper. Also, it's part of the same pack. And I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back. And we'll glue that right down the middle there. Okay, hopefully that's straight because where I have my project and where I have the camera is a little bit at an angle for me. We're gonna hold off on, oh no we're not, we're gonna glue this piece down now too. This is gonna go over top of everything else. Okay. Black and white is such a sophisticated color scheme, and I love that you can pair any other color with it. Because you know black and white goes with everything. Now this is Pineapple Punch Grow Grain Ribbon. It is very bright, but that's what I liked about it for this, is it really stood out against the black and white color scheme here. So we're gonna wrap a piece around our card. I like to tie my ribbon off straight from the spool without cutting it first because that way I can cut off exactly what I need without guessing and then ended up wa wasting inches and inches of ribbon because I guessed too much or I have to cut another piece because I didn't guess big enough. So it's only for classes that I measure out and cut the ribbon ahead of time but in my own personal crafting I just tie it straight from the spool and once I get it to the desired um, look that I want then I go ahead and I, I trim it Okay. so we have that and I'm not gonna glue this ribbon down because whenever I go to put these pieces down that'll hold this ribbon down for me alright so then we have these two pieces here this is also from I took this piece right here from my the Stitch So Sweetly dies and I die cut a piece of vellum from it and I don't know if you can see it but it puts the cutest little stitch marks around it. Then what I did is I took a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I used this framelit or this die to cut a piece out and this one puts little stitch marks around it too and I'm going to layer them on top of each other for a fun look and again Patty Bennett did this and I just I loved it I thought it was so sweet before I do that though I'm gonna go ahead and stamp happy birthday in poppy parade ink on this whisper white piece now this happy birthday also comes from the sending you thoughts stamp set right there I like the sort of uh, paintbrush look to this font and some of these sentiments, you can put these on the inside of your card too. So I, for this card, I have happy birthday. And then inside I put another sensational year of you. I've been getting a lot of use out of this free set. And when people have asked me for recommendations of what to get with their $50 order, this is, this is uh, most often what I recommend because you can get so much use from it. Oh, look at that. I stuck my finger in the poppy parade ink, of course. Now, with this, I want to stamp it a little bit over to the right because, again, I want to leave room for my poppy printed die cut there from the Elements Pack. All right, that looks good. Close the ink pad so we don't have any more mishaps. And we're going to put these pieces together. Now, because I am gluing this to a piece of vellum, I find that snail adhesive works best with vellum. The vellum is a really smooth, non-porous surface, and the... I just, the liquid glue, I, I just don't care for it with the vellum. So I'm going to take this piece of Whisper White, run a couple lines of snail along the back, 
And I will stick that to my vellum piece right in the center to layer it, just like that. Then I'm gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals on the back and make sure you put it only where the white Whisper White piece shows through. Because if you put it on the edges of the vellum, when you flip this back over and go to put it on your card, you're gonna be able to see those dimensionals and we are definitely not going for that look. We don't want our adhesive showing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead. You might have to adjust your ribbon a little bit more to make room for this sentiment. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that down. Hopefully that's straight. And then what I'm gonna do is take one of the sheets of the Peaceful Poppies Elements and I'm gonna pop out one of those, just like that. And I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue to adhere this to the card, just like that. And if you want, you can angle it. There's no rules that say you have to keep everything straight and stamping. Okay, there you go. There's that card. Now, everything inside of me wants to take some of these sequins and add a little bit down there just to dress it up a little bit more because I just love it. So you could do that too. You could take your fine tip glue pen and you can add a couple sequins to that card. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do that. I can't help it. I cannot help it. I'm having so much fun with these. Are you ever really into something and you just get really giddy about it and people think you're crazy because of how much you like it? Lisa, I saw your post about the magnetic eyelashes. Those are crazy. <laughs> I can't believe such a thing exists, but you know what? They looked really, really good on you. And I saw you definitely had people's interest in them. So good for you. Good for you. I know my eyelashes are disappearing. I probably could use some magnetic eyelashes myself, but me and the girls just thought that was wild. So yeah. So there you go. I dressed it up with those little sequins. I love this. So thank you, Patty Bennett, for the idea because it's really cute. Well, maybe not cute. Maybe sophisticated or elegant would be more the look or maybe more the word. That's what black and white says to me. Elegance. Okay. That is card number two. Now, I actually have... Um, some more ideas for using these elements packs. Let me see if I can bring up my other samples here. Okay, the mailman must be here if you don't hear Lily barking. So in this sample here, I punched out, let me grab them, I punched out these vellum pieces. Oh, she's really going nuts now. I punched out these vellum pieces, um, the three largest flowers, and I punched out those leaves right there, and I colored them in a color scheme with my alcohol markers of Dark Pool Party, Dark Blackberry Blitz, and Dark Poppy Parade. And what you can do is you can flip these over. So this is the front side, and you can definitely tell the front side from the back because the front side is a brighter white. So flip them over, and oh, there you go, this is the front. So you can see how this is a brighter white. So when you flip these over to the back side, that's the front, this is the back, you can take your alcohol ink markers and I, you can use either the brush or the bullet point side or you can use the brush tip side, it doesn't matter. And you go ahead and color the back side of those. Let me put this on, um, so if you can see those better on a piece of, uh, oh, you know what? I'll get a piece of black card stuff. I think that'll look, you'll be able to see them better. There you go. And what you can do is you color the back sides of, of these vellum pieces with Stampin' Blends. Now, what makes Stampin' Blends different from, say, our Stampin' Write marker? This one is a dye-based ink inside of it, which is water, has water in it. This is pure alcohol ink. So you can color on non-porous surfaces with your alcohol ink markers, which we call them Stampin' Blends. These ones that are dye-based ink, you can color on the rubber of your stamps there. But you don't wanna do that with the blends. The alcohol ink will damage your stamps, your red rubber stamps, so don't do that. But you can color on vellum. They are great for coloring on vellum and you can get a really cool stained glass look. 
And that's what I did with these flowers, is I used these three colors to color the vellum pieces in the elements pack, and then I used snail adhesive to adhere them to a thick whisper white card base. Then I used the painted labels dies to die cut a piece from black, basic black cardstock. But you know what, you could also use, if you wanted to, you could use this banner piece right here from the elements pack. And you could stamp the, and a heat emboss the greeting right on that. And you can put, you glued it right to the card and I added some more of those sequins around there too. So just, and it was so fun. It was so fun just to color it and then just lay it all out how I wanted it. And a little bit of snail held everything on just fine. So this is a really nice, clean, simple card. And I stamped the inside with congratulations. And again, these sentiments come from that free celebration set, sending you thoughts. Now remember, I have a project sheet that's going to have all these details down on it. So you don't need to try to remember all of this. Now the next card I have uses the watercoloring pieces, which are these sheets right here from the Elements Pack. And this is a Blackberry Bliss card base. This is a paint, was it paint Peaceful Poppies Designer Series Paper. It's a piece from there. And this also is a die cut label from the Painted Labels dies that coordinates with the stamp set. And my tip for you is to watercolor it right on this sheet. Don't punch them out first because it's too hard to try to hold them in place with your fingers. And you just take an aqua painter and you can take your ink pad and you can either give it a good squeeze from the bottom to put some of that ink into the lid of the, the ink pad or you can use your re-inker to drop a couple drops of ink in there and use your, uh, your aqua painter to go ahead and apply some color to these images. Now this, believe it or not, is the same color. It's this Blackberry Bliss here. But depending on how much water you use will determine how intense your color is. So this one, I had very little water applied. These ones had a lot more water, which diluted the color and the strength of this Blackberry Bliss color. And so it came out lighter. And then I used Old Olive to color those leaves there. Then once they're dry, you just punch them out and I use Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere them. Now, if you're wondering how I got these little flecks of color, you can do that look with either a Stampin' Write marker or with your Stampin' Blend marker. But take the cap off the brush end of whichever marker you're using, put the tip of it into the cap, and then just give it a little flick. And you'll see little spots of color come out onto your paper there. So that's how I did that little trick with this card. And I used both a Blackberry Bliss and a Mossy Meadow marker for that. And then that thanks sentiment, again, is from the free Sending You Thoughts stamp set, celebration set. So you can see how you can get a lot of mileage out of these elements pack pieces and from that free Sending You Thoughts set. Then the final card I have using this elements pack is this one here. And these also are watercolor pieces. I watercolored three of these and I stacked them on top of each other on this card. And I used the same colors of Blackberry Bliss and Mossy Meadow to do this. And I adhered them all with Stampin' Dimensionals. This is that crinkled seam binding ribbon, only I left it white. I didn't stamp on it like I did in our first card. This is another piece from the Elements Pack and that's the black embossed vellum. I'm sorry, black embossed cardstock. This is heat embossed with white stamping embossing powder and that again is a sentiment in the free Sending You Thoughts celebration set. And this is Peaceful Poppies Designer Series Paper. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I also from that Elements Pack used that black circle underneath my poppy bouquet there this circle right here. I tucked it underneath this bouquet. And then this mossy meadow die cut piece is from the painted labels, dies that coordinate with the painted or painted poppy set. It's this piece right here. And when you cut it out, this circle, it stays solid in the center there and it has a little stitched mark around it. I think I have, yeah, I do have a piece die cut from here. This is what it looks like die cut out. And for this card, I did it with Mossy Meadow. And that, that was that card. So you can see how you can have a lot of fun 
with that packet of elements and they're only six dollars and fifty cents they're so inexpensive i'll bring out all my projects here you could see everything that we did today all my samples um i felt like there was another card somewhere i said five i can't find the fifth one hmm I don't know. All right. Well, I don't know where it went. The fifth one went to, but I just wanted to tell you that if you need a catalog, feel free to email me, Nicole at the joyful stamper.com. And I will be happy to get a free catalog package in the mail to you. And also to this host code up here, if you go to my shopping store or my online store, shop with Nicole.stampinup.net and you use that host code with your order of at least $35, I will send you um, a project kit to make two of the two cards that we made today. So I will send you the supplies to make these two cards. And that's with a minimum $35 order using this host code right here. You have to get the order in by this Friday at midnight. And this lets me know that you want these two project kits. And I will have the project sheet up on my blog and in the description to the YouTube video once I upload this. So you'll know what measurements to use. You'll know what supplies I use to make these cards. It'll all be spelled out there for you. So make sure you get that order in by Friday, this Friday at midnight to get the kits for these. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at Nicole at the joyful stamper.com. So oh boy, I wish I could find that card. <laughs> I can't find the fifth one. I'll find it as soon as I uh, hit the off button, right? So, okay, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching the replay. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to earn your business. I appreciate your business. And have a blessed day, everybody. Bye.